Hi everybody, my name is Lars Christensen and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. What I want to do today is I want to give you the three things that I wish I knew when I started using Fusion 360. You know, when you're starting using a new program, there's always a few things that kind of like is a little confusing. So I hope we can address those here today. And as always, I love your comments and your suggestions. So put them down in the comment area. I know a lot of people are reading them and I know I will too. And if you like what you see, please subscribe to the channel. So let's start out with a blank slate here. So we're inside of Fusion 360 and you might want to start by bringing in uh, some other model from maybe Inventor or SolidWorks or one of the other formats. And you might be tempted to just go up here to the file drop down and say new design from file. But what you will see in here is that, well, you have a very limited selection and I'm a huge fan of ideas and stab, but you know, you might want a little bit more of that. One of the things that is important to remember as a new Fusion 360 user is how Fusion 360 is really tied in with A360. So Fusion 360 is your cool CAD and CAM. A360 is kind of like the collaboration on the cloud. And what we can do there is we can actually use conversion tools right on the cloud to import models. So instead, go out to the data panel, what is kind of like your access within Fusion out to A360, and here you can hit the upload button. And when you do that, you will see that now suddenly you have the whole cheesecake factory menu of different things you can bring into to Fusion 360. Now, what if you want to go the other way? So you have your model and now you want to export it out of something else. Well, again, if you go up to the file drop down, you will see there is an export version. But again, this is out of the CAD system itself and you are limited to those neutral formats. Now, you can do this from A360 and I want to show you another neat tip here. If you are within Fusion 360 and you want to go to A360, you can just go right here and you can see that you can open it up right from in Fusion 360. So when you do that, your web browser opens up and now all you have to do is go up to the right corner and here you have the drop down and now you can save it out all to all these great format too. Now the second thing that I wish I had known when I started playing around with Fusion 360 is this whole thing between direct editing and parametric modeling. So when you bring in your file from another system into Fusion, it's actually in what I call the direct editing mode. If you look at the screen, you will see to the, to the left, you kind of like have the feature tree. That is direct editing mode versus the parametric mode that most of CAD people are familiar with. And that will actually happen down in the bottom on the horizontal level. So what you can do from switching from direct to parametric is just to go up on your top level right click and now you can see that you can turn on capturing your design intent or switching it over to this parametric mode. So as soon as you do that, you will see if I start a sketch, if I start to cut, you will see that that now gets captured down in the horizontal parametric feature tree, what is really, really, really cool. Now, why would you have direct editing? But direct editing can actually be very cool. Here I have a fairly simple part. The, the parametric feature tree is, is fairly simple. But if I had to make a quick design change to this part, the direct editing mode could actually be extremely helpful. Now, there is one thing I got to warn you about here. If you are going from parametric to direct editing, you can't go back. So it's a one way street. So you just need to be aware of that. There's nothing wrong with that. You just need to know it. But if I have this part and I, for example, want to move a hole, check this out. I'm just going to kind of like go backwards. I'm going to go up, right click on the top level, and now I can actually unselect capturing that parametric history tree. And it brings me where I now have the features kind of like in the left side. And now I can just right click and can move my holes or move faces or whatever you have to do to your model. So be aware of these kind of like two modes that exist within uh, Fusion. Now I talked to a few what I will call Fusion experts and they always prefer in the parametric mode. So the first thing they will always do when they bring some fi file format into Fusion is to go up there and turn it on so they are capturing everything. So I'm not saying that that's the, always the right way, but that's at least what my sources are telling me is the favorite way to do it. 
Now, the last thing I want to talk about here is this whole thing about versions inside of Fusion 360. So this is one of the really neat things. So what you can do is every time you're saving your design inside of Fusion, it creates a new version. So you'll just see when you're looking uh, on your file, you'll see that it has a next version, next version, next version, next version. That means you can go back. It can be really neat uh, either if you're modeling yourself and you suddenly want to go back because you want to pursue another modeling technique or whatever. But also, of course, if you're working with customers, you kind of like have this revision or version control. So I want to show you how you can control that. Now, that also happens over in the data panel. So what you can do is if you go to the data panel and you click on a little info sign, here you now have access to all the different versions for that model. Now, I would recommend that you close the file that you have open in Fusion if you're going to bump the version here just so because you can actually have multiple versions open in the same window and i just don't want anything to be confusing so that might be just a good rule but what you can do is you can take a previous version and you can propagate it above your current version so you're not you're not really eliminating anything that you had in the past you're just taking the past and putting it above what you're having now so you're not deleting any steps what is of course awesome so you just click and you can promote it and now you have the next version and you can open that up the last thing i want to show is this really neat tip that my buddy bryce showed me uh, and it kind of like have to do with versions so what you can do inside of fusion is you can kind of like have models linked to other models almost like a kind of like an assembly mode so in this case here, I have this mold core that I have, and I have this bushing hole that I would like to move. Now, of course, I have that parametric feature tree down at the bottom, and I could start, you know, hunting around to find out where that bushing hole was. But I'm just going to take the direct editing route like I showed before. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to right click on the top level, and I am just going to get away from the, the parametric uh, capturing of the history. And I can go in now, I can right click, and I can move the hole. Now, you should probably not use these handles. You should actually probably put some kind of a value into to this so it's a little bit more control. So I move the hole. Now, this mold core is actually linked into another part because there's actually a CNC program who's going to program this mold core. So let's jump over to that design. You will see when I go over here that I am getting flagged up at top that there is a new version. Right, so this is really neat thing about Fusion. So it knows that the original mold core was just changed, and then now it's flagging the CNC programmer that there is a design change. Now all the CNC program have to do, or whoever is working on this linked uh, assembly, can click up and update to get that version. But here's a tip that Bryce showed me that I think is really cool, and I would never have thought of this, of course, is that you can now use the undo button to go back and forth and now you can actually get a visual indication on the screen on what actually changed on the model. So that's just a neat thing from right uh, within within there that you can just use the undo to, to check that out. I hope you found this helpful. As always, I love your comments and suggestions down in the comment area. I know a lot of people read them. I know I will read them all. And if you like what you saw, please hit the subscribe button. And until the next time, have an awesome day.